So, that's me. Um, I'm a consultant anaesthetist in uh, Kent, in England, and I've been asked to come and talk to you today about my experiences of using SecuraCath on the intensive care unit. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. This is, this is my hospital. I took, got this photo taken by the uh, air ambulance. They're good friends of mine, so the pilot leaned out the window, took a photo. We have 15 ITU beds in my hospital. That's my car there, the red one. So, I have uh, quite a developed team um, of uh, vascular access specialists, and we've been using the Secura CAF on pick lines for a little while. And I then decided to think about using it on the intensive care for our um, central lines. So, what I did looked around at the evidence around sutureless fixation. Um, and looked at our current practice, and I'm just going to talk to you about what, what I did. So as you know, there are some suggestions that we should not be using sutures to hold in lines. Now this is accepted practice for pick lines, and I think really ought to be accepted practice for central lines, for CICCs as well. I think you all know this. It, this is the same information saying that we should avoid, for a number of reasons, using sutures. So I had a look at our current practice. I looked at what's out there on the market, different securement options, looked at dressing options. And what I did is undertook a trial in my hospital of many products, combinations of products, and concluded that the best combination for us on our ITU was to use a secure calf to secure the line and hold the line into the patient. We use a bio patch for infection prevention and I use a grip lock CVC uh, sticky adhesive dressing just for convenience and I'll show you what I mean by that. But the key thing is that the, the, the secure calf is there to hold the line in the patient, to stop it coming out. It's about securement. And we also use a, a tegaderm dressing. So, I go around my ITU doing an audit, looking every, every week on a Monday, I would go up to the intensive care unit and have a look and see what was going on and see how we could move from where we were to where I wanted to be. Particularly looking at securement and dressing. And the two are often connected. People often think a dressing is what's holding the line in for me. That's not the case, because if the dressing lifts off, the line will come out. It's not good enough, in my opinion. This was my audit collection tool. So basically, it was just scoring each patient, just observating, looking at their central line to see if they had a secure calf in, whether the bio patch was there, whether the dressing was there, whether it was soiled. That means it's got blood in it. And then they got a total score out of 11. And I just wanted to see, eventually, all my patients having a score of 11 out of 11. So when I started, this is what I see every day. This is not now. This is what we started with. So this scores a zero. <laughs> it's not good. You can even see up here, there's blood on the, the strap for the, uh, the tube. Okay. So gradually, I'm picking up all the problems. The bio patch on upside down. This was a common problem initially, but at least the patient now has a secure calf. This is a bio patch that's the wrong size. <laughs> no idea. It's not even touching the insertion site. Dressings not sticking. This is not acceptable. At least the secure cath is doing its job and the line has not come out. But the dressing is hopeless. This is classic problem we face on ITU with the beard, the bearded man. Okay? And I'll come on to that. I was quite heartened by Mauro's talk yesterday. Some of you may have been there around this red, amber and green zones for central lines, and I'll show you what, what my interpretation of that has been independently. I didn't know Mara was going to talk about that, but I arrived at the same conclusion. So here again, a light dressing coming off, hair, 
there's even hairs in the dressing. This is not happy days. This is bad. So slowly, we start to make progress. So here's a patient that I would say was scoring very highly, looking good. The dressing's intact. The bio patch is there. Secure cath is in the right position. But most importantly, what it's allowed us to do is we now, in my ITU, will place all our lines into the internal jugular vein, but then we lay the line down onto the shoulder. Okay, so the reason we use an internal jugular vein, I know maybe you say that's not ideal, but I live in the real world. I have new junior doctors starting every three months, and this is a very big vein for them to hit, and it's a little bit away from all the nasty things in the chest. So I live in the real world, and in our world, this is a safer approach, but you get the advantage of good dressing securement, good dressing sticking, and the, the secure calf can easily be folded down onto the shoulder like this. So we're nearly there. And then here we are. This is an a, is a example of what we like to see every day. All of the factors scoring very well. Nice line, nicely positioned. Again, this is a line that's in the internal jugular. This is not in the subclavian or anywhere trainee, junior doctors, putting this into the internal jugular and then laying it down onto the shoulder. Very clean, nicely sticking, secure calf doing its job, holding the line in place, no sutures. So I'm just going to share with you, that sounds very easy, that journey was not easy for my staff, okay? It was very challenging. Old habits die hard. If in doubt, suture it. That seems to be the message from some of my colleagues, which is wrong. So what I did, I removed sutures completely. If they wanted a suture, they had to go to theatre to get one. It was a great way of reducing suture use for central lines. I had lots of complaints and failures early on, but that was a training issue. Okay, I... The secure cath takes a little bit of time to learn how to use it properly. But once you do use it properly, it's fantastic. So now it's routine use. I don't see any suturing and I don't have any complaints. Okay? But people have to learn how to do it properly. The two main problems we had teaching staff was how to put it in properly and to make sure that it was clipped together properly. The number of times at the beginning we had a line dislodging and I went to have a look and the secure calf was not clipped onto the line. The people, oh, this dirty secure calf, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. And I look and it's, it's open. It's not clipped down. So it's a user error. It's not a problem with the product. So regular auditing, as I said, and I've now stopped my audit because all of my lines now look like this. Well, most. Some tips for me, for you. We use an eight French secure cath on an eight and a half French central line. It fits very nicely, it's very tight, and therefore does not move. So I, use, I found this is a better size to use on this type of line. You need a longer CVC than you may be used to. If you go back to here, can you see on the outside here, this is a longer line. You need more line on the outside. To, you need at least three centimeters for the secure cath plus something to stick down. So we had to change our supply of lines from the short ones to a slightly longer one, from a 16 centimeter to a 20 centimeter line. Expanding the hole, okay, so initially, it's very difficult for people to learn how to put the secure calf in. But there's a fantastic, a fantastic trick of making the hole bigger. And basically what you do is you take the introducer that you use to make the dilation hole and you push it down between the catheter and the skin. You dilate it like a, any other dilation system. 
give it a wiggle round, leave it in. The skin stretches. Then, when you're ready with your Secura calf, you take the introducer out, and the Secura calf goes in very easily. The great advantage of this is that then the skin, elastic skin, closes down around your line, makes a very nice seal. So if you see on that lady, it doesn't, five minutes, okay. On that lady, it doesn't bleed, and it creates a really nice seal. It works really well. So that's expanding the hole. Make sure the secure calf is deep enough. It's initially, people not putting it in deep enough. Insert in the direction of the calf to positioning. So there's no point putting the secure calf this way and then trying to turn it round and fold it out. It creates a problem. So you put it in in the way that you want your catheter to go. Make sure both sides are clicked down properly. I've said that already. So what are the benefits? We have definitely seen less dislodgement. Our lines do not come out now very easily. I had one the other day when a patient fell off in the CT scanner. The line was fixed. That's going to happen. That would have happened with any fixation system. Okay. Um, it's easier to clean, and the nursing staff love it because you can stand it up and clean all the way around. When you suture it, you can't do that. Easier to clean. Less bleeding and less mess. No suture holes, I've shown you that. No needles, no problems with needles or injuries. And patient comfort, especially when awake. So this was my patient. I took a photo of him just before I came here. He's sitting up in his chair. Here's his beard, here, nicely away. He can turn his head from left to right, say hello to his family, and it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't grow in the beard. Works very, very well. And the Secura calf holds that in very, very nicely. We had, I am sure, less line infections. The problem I have, I only have 15 beds. So to show a catheter-related drop from two per thousand to one per thousand, I need 10 years to show that because we only have a very, very small number. We hardly have any infections anyway. Very high staff and patient satisfaction. So just to mention in the UK, this organization, NICE, this is just for your information, have found that using a secure calf for PIC lines is cost beneficial. And that's been recommended for NHS use to save money because the number of dislodgements of lines you have means that it saves money in the long term when you have a PIC line in for longer than a couple of weeks. I just thought I'd mention that I'm sure the same kind of advice will follow for central lines in the future. Cool. That's me. That's my experience. Cheers.